Uh, is Dr. Skubik with us? Yes, I'm here, Attila. Oh, wonderful to have you here, Dr. Skubik. Uh, well, we are uh, again from the same issue, March, April issue of the Fountain Magazine. We have uh, Dr. Skubik's uh, article, Birth or Humanity. So we're going to talk about that before uh, we go on with the Q&A with Dr. Skubik. I'll, I have a short bio of his. Uh, Dr. Skubik is a professor of law, ethics, and humanities at a retired professor of law, ethics, and humanities at California Baptist University. And uh, he's written extensively on drones, legalities, and practicalities, myths, and facts. He's an attorney uh, specializing in international law. He also conducted research on drones in the fall of 2012 while he was on sabbatical at Zirve University uh, in Turkey. Uh, so uh, last February, before the pandemic hit, uh, me, Dr. Skubik, and a group of friends from Los Angeles went to India uh, to have a kind of a, to visit the Hizmet institutions and also to see the touristical places. And uh, while we were on the trip, we went to Taj Mahal and we were so tired, uh, I suppose. And you had your, the inspiration uh, of this uh, article is that tiredness, I suppose. Am I right, or Dr. Skubik? Uh, in large measure, yes. I think it was uh, the, the tiredness that led to, as I mentioned in the uh, in the essay, uh, a sort of dream or vision. Uh, it was uh, not just being at a at a monument like Taj Mahal, uh, but traveling around India. Uh, even before uh, we arrived in the country, of course, there was quite a bit of information in the press that we were reading about the um, difficulties that uh, a number of minority groups and particularly Muslims were facing uh, given government legislation uh, that seemed to uh, create problems for these minorities. Uh, and so that was on my mind even before we arrived. And then of course the uh, coronavirus scare uh, while uh, we were uh, even traveling, uh, it was um, an interesting time to be traveling in a place like India, uh, both because of the uh, internal disruption from the legislation uh, and the uh, beginnings of the global disruption, which we are all experiencing now with the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit, you alluded to the, uh, you talked about the uh, story of San Francis. What is the gist of that story? Uh, St. Francis, uh, uh, who was known uh, throughout Italy and now around the world uh, as a, uh, a poor man who had committed his life to uh, preaching, but preaching in action, uh, as, as he puts it, uh, uh, always be prepared to uh, preach the gospel, the good news, and if you must use words. Uh, but if uh, words aren't necessary, then do so through action. Uh, and he was known as a preacher of the, of the good news through his actions uh, with uh, many groups of persons, uh, including those who were desperately ill, like lepers, and also to all creatures in God's creation. Uh, and so there's the story that's recorded uh, that I relay in part in the essay about his preaching to birds. Uh, and that the birds should recognize that as God's creatures, uh, their task is to uh, praise him in their diversity. Yeah, uh, wonderful. Now, uh, moving on, in the parable of birds, you talked about your recounting in your article with different colors and sizes living in peace. The birds are uh, living in peace in that place. But then the there seems to be a kind of a glitch that inserts the spirit of fearful of possessiveness, you say. Uh, fearful, the spirit of fearful possessiveness that turned everything upside down in that paradise of words. Now, I know as a lawyer, a professor of law and ethics, you're choosing your words very carefully. What do you mean uh, by that? What was the, again, this, uh, what is this, this fearful possessiveness is about? There is a view uh, that there are scarce resources on this earth. And because they are scarce, because they can be rare, uh, then it may be up to me to secure my portion. Uh, it's up to me to secure what I have 
and that means secure it from others to obtain what I think I need and to keep others away. But that's not God's creation. Uh, God does not uh, uh, manage a scarce world. He is an abundant creator uh, who gives plentifully to all who look to him for their needs. Uh, there is no such scarcity then that I need to battle others about, that I need to battle over. So when I say a fearful possessiveness, then it's a possessive attempt at possessing these scarce resources grounded in fear, grounded, that, grounded in the fear that I won't have enough or that you'll take it away from me. And that puts us at odds one with the other. Instead of my looking to God, I'm looking to myself or I'm looking to some others to whom I'm close to be providing my needs. And that means that anyone else is an enemy. Exactly, thank you. And uh, near the end of your article, you talked about uh, Thomas Mann and his testimony in 1947 before a US Congressional Committee. Uh, can you elaborate on that, Dr. Skubek? Yes, uh, Thomas Mann, for those who may not remember, uh, was a, a great literary figure uh, in the early 20th century and was actually a refugee from Germany uh, who came to the United States, um, uh, first to England and then to the United States, um, uh, fleeing the Nazis, uh, fleeing them relatively early because he could see uh, just what sort of uh, tragedy uh, was going to be playing out. And so he left and came ultimately to the United States. Uh, and while he was here in the States, uh, he recognized uh, through the uh, late 1930s and early 1940s uh, that there were concerns arising in the United States uh, that of course led us into, at the time he gave his testimony, uh, what today we call the Cold War. Uh, even before World War II was over, uh, there were these concerns like the fearful uh, uh, possessiveness that I speak of in the essay uh, arising in the United States. And so he gave his testimony to Congress saying that what the Federal Bureau of Investigation, what the FBI was doing with regards to uh, those who were said to be communists, uh, of those who were already advancing calls for expansion of civil rights, uh, he was seeing a crackdown on the part of the authorities that he thought was similar to what he would, was seeing in uh, Nazi Germany in the early 1930s before he left. Um, and so his, his, his testimony, I think, is, a, uh, uh, is an eye-opener or ought to be uh, an eye-opener for us today and perhaps an awakening uh, to the sorts of fearful possessivenesses uh, that we're experiencing uh, in many places in the world and I think in India and in the United States even today. Uh, well, uh, you finished, uh, you almost finished your article with a wonderful sentence that I love so much as the only Holy One continually and eternally renews the face of the heavens of the earth. And then you finish with a wonderful prayer. So let the readers, the audience take a look at that uh, finish in this fountain article of the March and April issue of 2020.